In this problem, we're told a tower crane must always be carefully balanced so that there is no net torque tending to tip it. A particular crane at a building site is a about to lift a 2800 kilogram air conditioning unit. The crane's dimensions are shown in this figure. So A is where must the crane's 9500 kilogram counterweight be placed when the load is lifted from the ground? Note that the counterweight is usually moved automatically via sensors and motors to precisely compensate for the load. And then B is determine the maximum load that can be lifted with this counterweight when it is placed at its full extent. Ignore the mass of the beam. So we don't have to care about the mass of the beam. And so let's go ahead and start with A for this problem. So A, we're trying to find uh, this distance right here. The distance this needs to be away to be able to, um, or so this could be counterweighted, right? So we're trying to find this distance here right here, and you can just call it D. So we're calling this D right here, distance D. And then we can call this uppercase D. So these are just two different uh, distances. We're just going to label them with those letters. So how do we solve this problem? So the first thing you want to do is just draw a free body diagram. And so the way we're solving this problem is with torque. And so you're going to take the sum of the torque to solve this. So what we need to do first is choose a pivot point. And so I'm going to choose this part right here, right? So this right here is going to be our pivot point, And you'll see why in a second. But essentially, there's going to be a force here. And we can just cancel that out if it's our pivot point, because we don't know that force. But Labeling all the forces on our thing. So imagine this is our beam right here. What forces do we have acting on it? So let me draw this here too. So this is just this. And so we have a force right here, right, which is mg. It's from this mass, right, gravity. So mg going down right here. I'm going to call this m1g. So this is m1g. And then right here, we have another mass, which is going to cause another thing, right? Because the whole thing is massless, so we don't have to worry about uh, that. So this is going to be M2G. So these are going to be the two forces acting on it, right? And then we have these distances here, but you'll see how that plays in a second. So this is basically our free body diagram. There is a force going up right here, but since this is our pivot point, we won't have to worry about that. So really, we just want the uh, forces that aren't at our pivot point, right? Which is this right here. So we need to know that torque, or you need to know this formula, torque equals radius or distance. I'm just going to call it distance. Distance times force times the sine of theta. Right, and you should know how torque works by now, uh, but essentially theta is the angle between uh, the radius, which will be this part right here, and our force. But you should notice for both of these, it's going to be 90 degrees, so we really don't have to worry about this, because the sine of 90 is just 1. So really, we're just going to multiply uh, the distance from the force, or by the force, right? So distance times force, this is the formula we're going to use. And so the sum of the torque, since this is in equilibrium, it means the torque, or the sum of the torque, is equal to 0. Right, so what we're going to do is set the sum of the torque equals zero, and we want to find uh, the total torque acting on this. And there's two different spots, right? There's this spot right here, and then this spot right here. So we got to calculate the torque on each of these. So you have to label the signs. So imagine this is like a clock, right? So imagine this right here is our center, and you can imagine it like a circle. This force is going to cause it to go clockwise, right? If you imagine it pulls down like this, it would go this way. And so since it's because, or since it's going uh, clockwise, we label it negative. So let's start with that. So negative. And then we're going to put the torque of this caused by this force right here. So the force is going to be m1 times g. All right, that's the force. And then we multiply by the distance. What's the distance away from our pivot point? Uh, it's going to be 7.7 .7 meters. They list it right here. Right, so I'm just going to put d for now. And then this one, we're going to write plus. And the reason this is, this one's going to go the opposite direction. So if this one's negative, it's going to be positive. And you should see it's going counterclockwise, and we label that positive. So this is m2g, right? So plus m2g. G is just gravity, by the way. So M2G, and then multiply by D the distance. Right, so this is the formula we can use. And so notice what we're trying to find here, D. That's the distance we're trying to find, this distance. So we can, uh, the, the, the distance essentially from where the counterweight, or where it should be, so we're able to lift this from the ground, or so it's staying in place. So what we want to do is just move it to the other side, right? Because if we move this to the other side, we can solve. So M2G times d is equal to minus, or sorry, I'm moving this to the other side, right? So just imagine I move this, and then this is right here. So m1g times d. It gets rid of the negative. And so notice how we have every single one of these variables. Uh, notice the g's just cancel first two. So really just m2d is equal to m1d, uppercase d. And so if we're trying to find d, this distance right here, it should be away. We can just divide by m2. So D is going to be equal to M1 times uh, uppercase D times M2. So what are each of these? So we said M2 is uh, going to be this weight right here. So 9,500. And then on top, we have M1, 
which is this one right here, 2800. And then we multiply by that by uh, uppercase D, which is this distance right here, so times 7.7. .7. So go ahead and do that, 2800. Here, I'll plug it in my calculator. 2800 times 7.7, .7, then divide by 9500. So when you do this, you're going to get 2.26. Uh, 9, 4, and so on. I'm just going to round to 2.3, so just 2.3, and then keep in mind what this is. It's a distance, and then these are both masses, so this is meters, this is kilograms, this is kilograms, and they cancel, so it's in meters. Uh, but yeah, so 2.3 meters, that's going to be this distance right here, or your answer to A. So that's A. Now what do we want for B? So B is to determine the maximum load it can be lifted if the counterweight is placed fully at its extent, right? So right now it's only 2.3 meters of the way, but we're going to say now it's all the way here. So instead of uh, D going to be 2.3, we're going to plug in uh, D is, or yeah, so instead of D uh, for this equation, instead of solving for it for 2.3, we can plug in 3.4, and then we, what we're trying to do is solve for the other mass, right? So we're trying to solve for uh, M1. We're trying to see the maximum weight it can lift, and M1 is this mass right here, right? So we're trying to see the maximum it could lift for this part. So essentially, just rewriting this equation, right? M2D is equal to m1 uppercase d. So trying to solve for this, but we're saying m2 is the same, 9500, times the distance, but the distance is 3.4. We're doing the maximum. So multiply by 3.4 is equal to m1, which is, uh, that's what we're trying to find, right? So ignore this ma uh, mass, because we're just trying to find the maximum we could do. So m1 times d, which just means we're dividing by it, right? Because you can uh, divide both sides by it to cancel. So divide by d, which is just going to be 7.7. .7. So go ahead and do this, 9,500. So do 9,500 times 3.4, and then divide by 7.7. .7. .7. you do this, you're going to get M1, or this mass, right, is 4194.805. So 4,194. I'm just going to round to 4,200. Just do what your teacher wants you to do. But essentially 4,200, keep in mind the units, this is meters, this is meters, this is kilograms. So these cancel, it's in kilograms. But yeah, so 4,200 kilograms or however you want to do it. But yeah, so this right here is going to be the maximum mass we can lift if this is uh, farther away, right? Because the farther this is away, uh, the greater torque it's going to create to cancel out this. But yeah, so 4,200 kilograms is your answer to B, 2.3 meters is your answer to A, and uh, yeah, hopefully you found this uh, useful.